families, Miss Stephanie here today with another video. And today, this mini lesson Tuesday is going to be the six ways to resolve conflict. With high scope, there are six ways to resolve conflict and I wanted to break down each step and talk to you about it and the reality that it's not going to be a smooth process until your child gets familiar with this way of resolving conflict. Sometimes you stop at step two and the child walks away from the problem and you would say, you are walking away, you are solving the problem by walking away. So it does feel a little hard to get through, but the more consistent you are with using these six steps, the much better your child becomes at verbally explaining the problem and being an active solver in the problem, which is super awesome when you get to that. So. The first thing I wanted to talk about was step one. Step one is to approach the situation calmly. That can be hard <laughs> depending on the fighting that's going on. If there's screaming, if there's crying, if there's anything unsafe, you want to approach calmly, make sure everyone's safe. And typically it's a toy that's being fought over. You're going to hold that toy and you're going to tell your children that you're working with, I see that we have a problem with this, so I'm going to hold it while we talk about and solve our problem. So being that mutual territory, you are holding the problem so that you can talk about it. So step two is going to be, you're going to acknowledge the children's feelings. To you, yes, they're upset, but it's so helpful when you say, I see that you are really upset right now. Can you tell me what is what you're feeling? And having them being able to label the feeling is great. Sometimes I'll say, you look really upset. And sometimes a child will correct you and say, actually, I'm frustrated. And that's great that they can label that emotion. So you want to approach the situation calmly, acknowledge the, both the children's feelings. And the third step is going to be to gather information. So the information you're gathering is what's happening. Did, who had it first? How did it get taken away? But remember that both children will have two completely different sides to the story. They don't always make sense. So you have to be an investigator and you have to try to solve the problem. But you're not going to solve the problem. You're just going to be helping them be in charge of solving the problem. So you'll talk to one child and if the other child gets upset, you'll just remind them that I'm listening to so-and-so right now. And when they are done, you will get a turn to share. So it's really important that we're acknowledging, acknowledging their feelings and letting them know that we are hearing both sides of the story before we get to anything else. So you'll hear the child's story, you'll listen to the other child's story, and then you're gonna just restate the information that they told you because sometimes we hear it wrong or we make assumptions and that's not what they were telling us. So it's really important to say, okay, so you're saying this and restate what they say and they will correct you if you um, maybe misheard and then you'll say to the other child and you're thinking this because you're saying and then you'll acknowledge them. So once you get to that step, then we're gonna go into um, that step four, that's restating the problem. Now we're gonna go into step five, which is asking for ideas for solutions and choosing one together. The keyword is together. And you might not get to step five. You might only get to step one and the child walks away. That's solving the problem. You're gonna say out loud, you are solving the problem by walking away. Some, a lot of times when you get to this step five, one of the children will just hand the toy to the other child and walk away. Like they're done, they don't want it anymore. But for the children who do still need resolution, this is great. So we're asking for them to think of an idea to solve the problem. In my classroom, we use sand timers. We have a one minute, a five minute, and a 10 minute timer. And I would always, if they're not having any ideas or you're new to using the six ways to resolve conflict, you're sometimes what I, I would say is, well, how many minutes do you want it for? How many minutes do you want it for? So now they're negotiating. Well, I want it for five minutes. And you'll say, okay, so you want it for five minutes, but how long will so-and-so have it for? And they could say four minutes. You'll talk to that child. 
So-and-so says they want it for five minutes and that you can have it for four minutes. Really important to say, does that work for you? 99% of the time, they're going to say no. That does not work for me. Sometimes they say it because it just feels good to say no. That doesn't work for me. And then you say, okay, well, that solution didn't work. So what's your idea? And they could say, you know, I want it for 10 minutes. They can have it for 10 minutes. Then you'll, you know, ask the other child, does that work for you? 10 minutes and 10 minutes. And if they say yes, you'll ask them to go get that 10 minute timer. Or if you have a phone or a kitchen timer, set it for 10 minutes. Typically what happens at this stage is once they come up with a solution, they forget to check the timer or it goes off and the problem resolved itself. But not always, which requires step six, which is following up. Be prepared to follow up with support. If the timer goes off and the other child still wants it and the child with the toy does not want to give it up, you're going to have to go through all six steps again. Sometimes the child gives it up early and sometimes they are really good at, okay, you get it for 10 minutes and then I'll set the timer for 10 minutes for my turn. And you'll just go back and forth being that support depending on what they need at that time. Um, it will look completely different depending on the children that are involved, um, depending on the in-depth that you might have to break down for them. It's really important though to try to stay neutral. I know that's hard. <laughs> um, making sure we're validating their feelings and emotions, letting them know that we have a problem and problems are okay. Problems do happen. I had a, one child who was so afraid of getting in a conflict because they didn't want to get in trouble so she just started crying and I asked her why she was crying and she was saying because she wanted a toy, but she didn't know that she could be in charge of solving the problem. So I always explain that problems happen. It happens with adults. We have problems that need to be solved and we're, this is how we solve our problems. We talk together. We're a team that works together to address the situation both your sides of your stories will be listened to and then you'll be an integral part in suggesting ideas. And like I touched on, they and they might not be five minutes and five minutes. Okay, you, you agree with that? There will be days where they solve their own problem. They get a timer out and I see a timer and I, you know, I ask what the timer is about. They tell me they went through all the six steps. It's really cool. It's hard to get there. But once you do, it's really successful. The children get to take ownership of their feelings and solving their own problems, which is awesome. And what we always want is for them to be independent. And so those are the six steps to resolving conflict. I hope this helped. Um, and like I said, you might try it. It might not feel natural at first. I know when I first did it, it's, I'm like, oh, I'm not getting to step two. How am I going to get to step six? But step six, but the more consistent you are, that is the key word, consistency. Being consistent with the six steps, it's going to work. They're going to learn these communication skills and integral skills in solving problems because problems happen all the time. So I hope this really helped and enjoy and let me know if it's not working or you need some suggestions or additional tips, because like I said, it can be hard. Have a good day. Bye.